Welcome folks, welcome to Lit Valentine. It's my pleasure to welcome you all once again to my channel. Today we are going to focus on an interesting topic friends. As I said you before, idioms are very important in our day to day life because English is a common language which we are all using nowadays. So without English, no conversation is unable to do our day to day life works. So if you want to improve your vocabulary, just follow the idioms to make yourself stand unique among the common speakers. So with this positive vibes today, I am going to interesting idioms. So today's idioms are sit tight. So don't laugh by seeing this word sit tight. It doesn't mean you have to sit tight. It means wait patiently if you want to utter someone that please wait patiently because patiently is a normal word right so instead of using the same word like patiently or the words related to it you can use the idiom sit tight it means wait patiently the next word is pitch in meaning to join in join in is actually the common word right so if you want to say someone that please join in please join in to collect some money so instead of using the same words like to join in or the words related to this meaning you can use the idiom pitch in it means to join in the next interesting word is cold turkey while seeing this word cold turkey don't imagine that it is talking about Turkey or Turkey is a cold place like that because usually no we people will think like this. So actually this cold Turkey means suddenly quit something. If you want to say that please quit this thing or please quit some uh, what to say that alcohol the bad habit so something if you are doing something in a right way right now if you are quitting something immediately you can use the word cold turkey it's an meaning suddenly quit something is the meaning of the idiom cold turkey so i hope so these words are something interesting for you my dear friends so with this let's move on to the next slide so far we had seen about renaissance in the previous video i had talked to you about renaissance the beginning of the modern english period so everything we had seen in my previous video in that i had talked to you about how it was begin and uh, some of the important events which happened during the beginning of the renaissance like fall of constantinople and what is byzantine empire so all these things we had discussed in the previous videos like how they preserved the scribes or copies when the crusades started fighting so everything we had seen in the previous video we have also saw about francisco petrarch who was the important person who was the practitioner of these sonnets who was the also called as the father of humanism who preserved many scripts many manuscripts scribes everything during this protest and we have seen about dante who is the author of divine comedy De Monarchia and La Vita Nova and so many books of Dante we had discussed and uh, Petrarch the author of Canzonier or books of Canzoni the poems which he had famous for and we have seen about Canzoni which is a meter and we have also talked about Boccaccio the first prose writer of any European language and some of his important works like Decameron, Philostrato, Philaclo, Tessida and how these works influenced Chaucer. So all these things we had seen in the previous videos my dear friends. So today we are going to focus on some other important writers. Who was very very important and prominent during the time of the renaissance. So who are they? The first person is Philip Sidney, Edmund Spencer and University Wits, Shakespeare. Then we have writers like. John Dan, Francis Bacon. So all these people. So in England there were so many new important new genres were there. And all these writers played an important part during the renaissance period. And each one is famous for each of their genre. So all developed from 
these European masters. For example, if you take Philip, Philip Sidney first, he is famous for his work Arcadia, which is written to the Countess of Pembroke Arcadia. Okay, it is based on the Countess of Pembroke Arcadia, who is the real figure there. So Philip Sidney's Arcadia is a famous work of him, and it was about the Countess of Pembroke Arcadia. It was dedicated to her actually. And it developed from the Arcadia of Sanazaro. So this Philip Sidney's Arcadia, this work was influenced from the Arcadia of Sanazaro. Okay, keep that in mind. With this, let's move on to the next slide. Edmund Spencer. We all know about Edmund Spencer, right? He is famous for his work, Fairy Queen. Fairy Queen, and it was modeled on Ludovico Ariosto's Orlando Furioso. So keep that in mind my dear friends that all these works are very very important and where it had got the influence is the most important questions which we all have to aware of. So once again I will repeat that Philip Sidney wrote Arcadia and it was developed from the Arcadia of Zanazaro and Edmund Spencer Fairy Queen is modeled on Ludovico Ariasto's Orlando Furioso. Okay. So with this let's move on to the next. Christopher Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe is known for his Machiavelli villains. It's a very familiar question. So, please keep that in mind that Christopher Marlowe is famous for his characters Machiavelli villains who didn't care for ethics in order to get their ends and they would resort to any means the end. Justify the means unethical approach actually and this came from Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince. So here if you take the Machiavelli character, the villainous character, Christopher Marlowe is famous for and actually these characters, this type of characters is came from Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince. Next we are going to focus on Michael D. Cervantes who wrote Don Quixote. He is a famous figure in Spain. This Michael D. Cervantes is known for his famous work Don Quixote. Okay. So these are the European masters of Renaissance who dedicated much phenomenal works during the time of the Renaissance. So they started like Petrarch and Sonnet Years which has 14 lines. 14 line lyric poem. This Petrarch and Sonnet are divided into two, that is octave and sestet. If you take octave, octave will have eight lines and if you take sestet, sestet will have six lines. So both of it separated by a pass, which is called a sesshu. Octave and sestet separated by sashura. okay. This is the important part that is in Petrarch and Sonnet, the octave and sestet. The octave which has 8 lines and the sestet will have 6 lines. Both of it will be separated by a pass or it is also called a sashura. Okay. The Petrarch and Sonnet took the form of an English sonnet. The English sonnet is also called as Shakespearean sonnet. And this Petrarch and Sonnet was introduced into England by Thomas Wyatt. Meanwhile, we have blank verse, another important experimental one introduced into England by Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey. Petrarch and Sonneteers. This Petrarch and Sonneteers lead to the explosion of sonnet errors in England and throughout England. So many people started writing about love, friendship, mortality, and so many things. So many sonneteers have developed all these themes by using this genre so the other important genre was there it was tragedy if you take tragedy or while we are reminiscing about tragedy immediately the four important plays of shakespeare will strike in our mind so what are the important plays of shakespeare othello hamlet king lear and macbeth so all these plays are the important tragedies of Shakespeare which played an important part of tragedy during the renaissance period. So the important one is Senecan tragedy. Okay, Senecan tragedy was the most important tragedy during the renaissance period. 
and Shakespeare himself wrote to his first tragedy. Shakespeare's first tragedy was Titus Andronicus. Of course, Othello, Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, everything are the important place of Shakespeare and it is an important tragedy too. At the same time, if you have the question like what is the first tragedy written by Shakespeare, immediately it should come to your mind that Titus Andronicus is the bloody revenge tragedy, okay? The bloody revenge tragedy of Shakespeare and the first tragedy of Shakespeare was the Titus Andronicus and then we have Hamlet. So, with this, Renaissance tragedies will be continued from the next video my dear friends so till that keep on watching all my previous videos it will be so helpful for you i hope so especially the candidates who are preparing for your net and slate and or your major in english especially those who are pursuing your career in english literature you all can subscribe my channel and you can share it with your friends too who are in need of learning who want to explore literature more you can share it with them and apart from that i am posting some of the interesting unknown facts in the shorts so you can watch that too this is the shorts is not only for the english literature students it for common it is common for all the other people who wants to know something interesting apart from their academics so with this me conclude my lecture thank you thank you very much for supporting me i need all your support in my upcoming videos too till that subscribe little valentine to get interesting videos and interesting shots my dear friends till that take care bye bye and i will meet you all with a new interesting video in my upcoming episode so till that take care bye bye